The D&D Underdark paint set is a new expansion to the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments series. The set includes 10 paints, eight of which are completely unique to the D&D range, specifically designed to match the monsters and horrors that dwell in this nightmare realm. The set also includes this fantastic Drista Orden sculpt, and I can't wait to get some paint on it. But before we do, we're going to have to prime the model. For that, we're going to use some brush on gray primer and just apply it in two thin coats. The rest of the paints that you're going to need for this tutorial are Abyssal Black, Lawful White, Tree Green, Troll Skin, Underdark Gray, Bugbear Brown, Mithril Silver, Brown Wash and Shadow Wash, Rigid Leather, and Fairsers Purple. After priming the model, we give all of the skin on the model a coat of Underdark Gray. Next, we're going to apply rigid leather all over the armor, leg armor, and greaves on the model. I do recommend thinning down your paints with just a little bit of clean water. This will help to prevent you from obscuring any of the fine detail on this Drist sculpt. If necessary, you can apply a second coat of rigid leather. After we've applied the rigid leather, we're going to use a 50-50 mix of Abyssal Black and Fairsers Purple all over the cloth bits on the model. Then using Bugbear Brown, we're going to quickly paint in all of the straps on the Drist model, like here on his chest and also around his waist. Moving on to my favorite part of the model, we're going to paint in the cape using Treant Green. Now green is one of those colors that offers a little bit lighter coverage, so I do recommend applying two thin coats. Moving on, we are going to begin blocking in all of the metallic areas on the model, like the buckles on the straps and belts, and of course, both of the swords that Drist is wielding. This is such an incredible sculpt. It's super dynamic, definitely deserving of one of the Dungeons and Dragons most admired heroes. Now we're moving on to painting in all of Drist's hair. For this, we're going to be using Lawful White. I do recommend, however, applying this in two thin coats. And now we're gonna go back to the gray primer to reestablish the fur around Drist's cape. In order to add some depth and contrast to the model, you'll want to follow along for these next steps because we're going to be applying a wash to the model. Applying a wash adds loads of depth and contrast to your model. For this next step, we're going to be applying brown wash to all of the leather bits on the model, like the boots and the armor, as well as the base of the model to bring out some of the texture of the rocks and the stones on the base, as you can see on your screen here. Now we're going to be applying Shadow Wash, which is a rich brown wash, and we're going to apply this all over the metallic areas, the black and purple cloth that we painted with our Abyssal Black and Fizar's purple mix. We're also going to apply this lightly to the skin tones and a watered down mixture to his hair. The Dungeons and Dragons paint sets do not come with a green wash. You could use green tone from the Army Painter Quick Shade range, but what we're going to do here is use Troll Skin. This is a nice emerald green tone that we've watered down, and as you see on your screen here, we're just applying this into the recesses of the cape on this Drist model. We'll repeat the same application to the back of the cape, again, focusing just on the recesses of the model. It's perfectly okay to stop at this point and bring Drist on your next adventure. But as you notice, the wash step does darken down the model a bit. So for the last step in this tabletop ready tutorial, we're going to be applying a highlight and reestablishing some of those base tones. The washing step is really helpful as it defines those shadows and recesses on the model. So this step is essentially coloring in the lines to reestablish the base tones with your first highlight. We're using Underdark Gray here to reestablish the highlight on all of the skin tones on the most raised areas on the model. Following that same technique, we're going to reestablish the brown tones on all of the leather areas using Rigid Leather. As you can see, just focusing on the uppermost tips and most raised edges on the model. 
I'm going back to Abyssal Black and Fair's just Purple. And for this step on the cloth bits, you can see the shadows are very prominently defined. We're just going to apply this to the raised ridges and folds on all of the cloth on the model. As you can see right here on the pant leg of Drist, just the tip of his kneecap and up the thigh on the model here, as well as the folds on the back of the leg. This is very simple. We're just coloring within the lines that the wash step gave us. The washing step does definitely darken down the model a bit. So going back and re-establishing some of these base tones as your first highlight helps to make the model stand out on the tabletop for your next dungeon adventure. We're applying Bugbear Brown to all of the areas of the model that we previously base coated in Bugbear Brown just focusing on the most raised edges, like the tips of the toes, the folds in the backs of his boots, allowing the wash to act as a guideline, again, for us to color inside the lines. Moving on to tree and green, we are just gonna focus this initial highlight to all of the most raised areas on the model. As you can see, just drawing nice clean lines, we've watered down the paint a little bit so it runs very smoothly over the model. We will apply this highlight to all of the raised areas of the cloak on Drist. Just careful to focus on the most raised areas. Moving on to Mithril Silver, we're just going to focus on the raised areas. You can see that the brush has very little paint on it. I've watered down this paint just a little bit, and I'm only using as little paint as I possibly can to pick out these very detailed highlights. And then I'm just reestablishing the base tone on the very tip of the sword. Back to gray primer, we are just going to pick out the most raised areas on the fur of the cloak on this Driss sculpt. And then we are going to apply it to the most raised areas on the rocks of the base. Again, coloring inside of the lines that the wash has created for us. Finally, we're going back to lawful white. And for this, we're just going to trace the white paint on the most raised areas on the hair of the model, dragging the side of the brush, as you can see on screen here, across the most raised areas. Careful not to get the white paint into any of the recesses that we've created and redefined with the wash. And there you have it, Drist is ready for the tabletop. I do recommend that before you put them on the tabletop and go to war with your buddies on your next dungeon adventure, applying a coat of our Aegis suit satin varnish or anti-shine matte varnish to protect all of your hard work. Using the Underdark paint set along with the rest of the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments range offers you a plethora of colors specifically designed to paint up any monster, warrior, or wizard in your next dungeon party. This expansion will be in stores and online real soon, so be sure to get your hands on it. Remember the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as advanced as you'd like it to be. With the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. Stay tuned because we're gonna be taking this tabletop ready drist to a masterclass level in our next video tutorial.